Hello, chat. Let me just turn this on. Here we go. He knows. Jordan Peterson knows. Yes. Uh, hello, Jaddy Jaddy. <laughs> uh, will I cover the 4chan Winter Coop? I, I don't know what it's about. I did notice that um, China has started with the Olympics. And uh, my God, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, th there was this American television network. I think it was MSNBC. Uh, but they were simping for China really hard. I mean, my God, if, if they would treat America like they would treat China, they would be more right wing than Fox News. Like they would be the most patriotic channel on cable. And I think China chose uh, two Uyghurs to carry the torch. And this cable was like, ah, you see? You see China likes Uyghurs. Like, oh, oh how will the West deal with this? I mean, the West um, was pushing conspiracy theories regarding China oppressing its Uyghur population. But here you have it. Two Uyghur athletes, they're carrying the torch. Westerners, BTFO. And I'm thinking this is exactly like when you catch a racist and he's like, I got I got black friends. I'm not a racist. Like some of my best friends are black. So in other words, just ignore all of the video footage, all of the evidence, all of the drone footage, uh, everything. Just ignore all of that and accept it, you bigot. Accept it that China loves its Uyghurs like no other country. Uh, Uyghurs uh, or Uyghurs? I think it's pronounced Uyghurs. I think you're trying to mislead me. Uh, I see what you're trying to do here. You're, you're trying to be subversive. You're trying to subvert my show. You're trying to get me into trouble with the YouTube algorithm. The Uyghur stunt was incredibly cruel. Forcing them uh, to be displayed for the communist regime. Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, y you know, the very notion that, that, like, you're being accused as a country that you're mistreating a minority. Now, that may or may not be true, but if you want to disprove the accusation... You don't do it by showing like, okay, well, we're going to have the Olympics and two of the athletes happen to be Uyghurs, so therefore we're not doing anything bad. I mean, it, it blows my mind. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, I was speechless when I was watching that. It's like, oh, I guess it's debunked. I mean, fact checkers have fact checked. <laughs> anyway. Uh, hey man, says Antifa Romania, too much noise in the area, I'm in and I can only do a proper live with you at the end of March. It's okay, it's fine, just, uh, you, you can post on the chat if you want me to read anything and, uh, we can do that. Or you can even give me some articles, like left-leaning articles, things that leftists care about that I can give you my opinion if you want. But yes, uh, it, it, it was just surreal. I, imagine if Nazi Germany did the same during the Olympics. Like, they would have uh, got two Jewish people to carry the torch. And they would be like, see? Who says we're mistreating Jewish people? I mean, it's obviously debunked. <laughs> God. Uh, which is kind of funny, because in Germany, you did actually have some Jewish people that uh, were considered honorary Aryans. Not many, but they existed. Um, and I think there were even a couple that uh, went to war on behalf of the Nazis with the promise that when they come back, they're going to be treated better. So uh, even nations that really oppress minorities like never before in human history, uh, even those have exceptions. Like not, not every single minority needs to be oppressed for oppression to exist. I mean, that's ridiculous. Which is kind of funny, because uh, in the United States, I mean, it's the left that says, well, there is oppression against black people, even though Barack Obama was president. Although, to be honest, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry about that. But to be honest, if China would have had a Uyghur president, like Chairman 
that's a Uyghur, I would be like more convinced that, okay, you know, that's an evidence that maybe they're not being oppressed. I mean, if you have a Uyghur president, all right. Or, well, it's not president, it's chairman. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think this is what the United States needs to do. Uh, they need to put black people in the Olympics and boom, racismus has been debunked. How is China going to deal with it? Because China accused uh, America of racism. Of systemic racism, even worse. It, it was systemic. Uh, and that's what America needs to do. Get black people to participate in the Olympics. There you go. All right. Um, dude, I don't like neoconservatives. Uh, Abdi Muhammad says he can give me neoconservatives. I, don't like, I, I would rather like leftists. Leftists at least are honest. Neoconservatives are subversive. Yes, neoconservatives are more subversive than the leftists. Like you have leftists that infiltrated the right wing movement. I mean, <laughs> they're at the peak of their game. They're hyper leftists. Okay. Um, funny thing. At least Nazi Germany let black athletes compete. Well. You got to understand, they didn't really interact that much with black people in Germany, right? So the population didn't have any feelings towards black people, good or bad. So, yeah, of course, they would let them compete. Um, I don't think Jewish people could compete, though, in the Nazi Olympics. I, I have to check it out. I actually don't know about that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, while the Nazis were racist, uh, their treatment on black people... Uh, was nearly as bad as how they treated Jewish people. And uh, that, that is also to the fact that, I mean, it's kind of like uh, asking people, are you racist towards Eskimos? Like, probably not. I mean, you, you never met one, so you, you don't have opinions on it, right? Like, there, there's no, the, the media doesn't talk about it. You don't meet people like that in real life. So it's kind of difficult to be um, harboring. Like, you need the population to harbor animosity towards a group in order to actually have uh, the oppression. If the population doesn't harbor animosity, and if you can't harbor animosity if you don't even interact with people, then, well, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> weren't a lot of neoconservatives former Trotskyists? Okay, I don't want to talk about neoconservatism now. I want to talk about happy things. I looked at uh, yesterday, there was a VTuber that caught my attention. And I realized that while I'm watching this VTuber being very savage about a particular subject, uh, I noticed that she had a very nice setup on her stream. Very professional. With an intro song and with a very beautiful animation and a nice background. And I realized that I need to step up my game because I've been lazy. I have been very, very lazy with my channel. So I need to get a webcam. I need to buy better equipment, a new microphone, perhaps. And most importantly, I need to get a new layout and figure out how to better use your OBS because... Uh, I've been uh, leaking subscribers for a while, and it's true. Um, it's, it's my fault. I mean, it's the algorithm as well, but it's also my fault. So I need to put up better content, and I'm planning to improve. I, I hope by April I will have the equipment, and I will be able to um, learn how to do better live streams, because uh, with the video channels, it's fine, but with the live stream, it's going down the drain. So maybe I can sack it up and have guests again and hopefully I'll, I'll be able to put something more entertaining. GG knows which uh, VTuber. Hmm, I see. Uh, all right. 3D Avatar. Maybe, you know, uh, there, there is this guy. Flamenco. I watched uh, Flamenco play Mr. Medicare, and he had uh, a very interesting avatar that was actually moving in the corner of the screen. And he, he has a puppy in a teacup, and it's very cute and adorable. Maybe I can talk to Flamenco and ask him uh, how he does his magic. 
I need to start networking with people again because I've been isolating myself into this corner of YouTube alone doing my stuff, but uh, it's time to come out of my shell. No pain, no game, as they say. I need, I need to start networking with people again. So maybe I will uh, find out the, the magic of Pixar and do very beautiful and ushkushi live streams. Yes. Um, let's uh, look at some of the interesting events which transpired. So, uh, this is art. I don't know why, but it is. In New York, a cube made of $11.7 billion worth of solid gold is sitting in Central Park. And of course, it has its own security detail. Now, the cube is actually very tiny uh, compared to how it looks in the picture. But... It's kind of interesting, right? Like New York has a lot of homeless people and it's like, look how wealthy we are. Fuck you. <laughs> that, that's kind of the message here. But the interesting thing is like, how exactly is this art? I wonder. I mean, it's a cube made out of gold. I, I get it, right? I mean, it's expensive. But but how exactly is it? Art? Like, what, what does it translate to you? What, 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 are, what do you feel when you watch this? I mean, if, if this was in your home, would you stop and you would just watch this and ponder about the human existence? You know, they have these anime girl statuettes, like you can buy one with 2B or uh, you can have one with Mikasa. That's art, right? Because you look at that Mikasa and, and you look at her shapely body and you wonder... How long is that I'm going to stalk her? 10 years or so? I, I mean... Is that I'm going to hate you if you look at the Mikasa statuette? But that is art, right? Like it takes skill to make something like that. Meanwhile, what is this? What is this? Why, why is this art? I mean, I know anything that mankind makes, so a caveman that wipes his ass and then places his hand on the wall on the, of the cave and leaves an imprint, like, that is art. I agree. But not all art deserves to be displayed. Like, not all art is beautiful. So, for example, when I look at this, what, what exactly am I supposed to get? How is it filling me with catharsis? Oh, see, I, I use smart words, catharsis. How exactly is it filling me with it? It doesn't do anything. Apparently, it's got a security detail. I wonder who's dumb enough to steal this. Like, imagine if you steal this. What do you do with it? You can't fence it. I mean, no one is going to buy this from you because it's too hot. And I think you can melt it. But, like, even if you melt it, it requires very high temperatures. Like, you can't melt it anywhere. So, like, they're going to catch you if you steal it. Because a lot of people in the comment section are like, oh, well, we want to go to Central Park. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Like, yeah, you know, like some objects, if you steal them, it's not the hard part stealing them. Selling them is the hard part. And I think you would be caught immediately by the long arm of the law. The security is just for show. Yes. Um, do more specific in-depth videos about specific topics. Also try to get sponsors. Well, the problem with the topics is that I run out of them because I'm making uh, four videos in a live stream. So two videos on my main channel, two on my secondary. I run out of topics. So I just interact with the chat mostly. Um, and hopefully I can do some call-ins. I can get some of you guys in here to talk. They would steal it for the point of stealing it. I mean, I guess if you want to spend your life in prison, uh, usually it matters the value of the object you're stealing, like $11 billion. I think you would probably get lifetime in prison. So, not a good idea. Not, not a good look, as they like to say.
Now, speaking of in-depth topics, I, I discussed this on my main channel, but I want to address it here as well. Let's see if I can find the very beautiful Ushikushi picture. Here we go. I mean, everything about this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, th this is poetry. See, this is art. Not that cute. This right here is 100% art. I, I really, really love this. this. Nothing tells you 2022 more than this. Like, every aspect, every pixel is beautifully placed to create this harmony of catharsis, which accurately describes the absolute state of reality today so first of all i gotta point out the corpo art so if you don't know what corpo art is i think i need to actually make a video about corpo art because it too deserves talking so this is a uh, corpo art Apparently, it even has a name. I'll have to do some research before the video. I can't embarrass myself. But you probably see this type of art when you go to corporations. So what is corpo art? Uh, usually, the colors may be unnatural. So you might have like blue people or pink people or, or something like that. And they have little heads and large arms. And the reason it's called corpo art is because you see it on a lot of corporations, like no one has this in their house. I mean, I'm pretty sure there must be a person out there that has this in their house, but like, it's usually not something that people enjoy looking at. I mean, you're not going to walk past this and you're going to stop and turn around in order to absorb, to get the catharsis. It's just there in order for the world not to be blank. That's why it exists. It's very easy to do. You don't need to be an expert. I mean, even I can probably draw this. You don't need to be an Ethan Van Skyver. Uh, and it's it's very easy to do, right? So that's why probably a lot of corporations buy it because it's cheap, easy to manufacture. Uh, but it looks bad. I mean, it's, it, it's bland. I would rather see some tiny flowers placed next to one another than to see this. Right, so this is corpo art, and, and what do we have here? We have the same corpo art, small head, large arms. Brilliant. Secondly, a lot of corporations, what do they care about? They care about the check boxes, right? So uh, the, the number of check boxes that you fill, the more progressive you are, the more accepted, more tolerant. So in this case, you have not a woman, but it's not just any woman. It's a more prestigious woman. It's a woman of color that's also a Muslim. And on top of that, she also is missing a limb. I mean, come on. This is maximum levels of progressivism. Like, you're so progressive, you're sending spaceships to Alpha Centauri. And again, like, this is not an actual person. It's a drawing, right? So the person who drew this wanted to go for the maximum effect. The only thing that I would add, I would also make her blind. To, to get another checkbox, right? Probably like a, an LGBT flag as well. I mean, that, then you really, really become progressive. But anyway, right? What, what I also don't like about the picture is the fact that she is wearing a hook for a leg. I mean, I understand why people would use a hook for an arm. Because if, if you're missing an arm, with a hook you can use it to open doors, you can use it to pick up a luggage. You can, I, it's more useful to have a hook. Obviously, it's not as effective as having a functioning arm. But it's better than nothing. But if you have a hook for a leg, then what, what, like you, you can trip. It's actually harder for you to walk. So the person who drew this has absolutely no idea how it's like to be disabled. So it's not, it's not a representation. Right? It's a person who is a disabled wanting to show how much he cares about disabled people. No, like if you want, uh, a wooden leg would have been better. It offers more stability, right? But this, I mean, imagine walking um, on a surface that's not flat. 
So, for example, walking, um, I, I, but even like climbing the stairs. No, sorry, going down the stairs. Like going down the stairs with this equipment is dangerous. That's like an extreme sport. You, you're more lucky to come out alive if you do extreme skating on the railway of the stair than climbing down the stair with this. I mean, I, I would, I would rather just pull it off and use a cane. You're, you're more, more likely to go down the stairs properly like that. Jesus, this woman must be a miracle. I mean, the, the way. Well, okay, whatever. Uh, not, not to mention, like, if you have this, can you imagine if uh, it clings to something, like to a bush? You know, you're walking in a bushy area. There's, there's a lot of bushes and. All of a sudden, you're trying to make a step and bloop. You're like, oh, Dios mio. What happened? But okay. To me, this, this tells me that the person who drew this doesn't know a single disabled person in real life. Because any disabled person would look at this and they would start screaming. It's like, what is wrong with you? So what is solo poly? Now, it's natural for human beings to have sex. But um, in order to describe the act of having sex, this person had to write an entire paragraph. And what they're describing, and I, and I actually had to think, like I, it didn't come into my mind from the first reading, no. This is why it's art. I had to meditate, I had to ponder. It's like the wonders of the universe. It's like, what are they trying to say? And what they're trying to say is like, if you're a schizophrenic person with multiple personality disorders and the personality disorders are falling in love with one another, then you are solo poly. I want you to take it in, chat. I want you to understand what solo poly amorous means. So you're a person, okay, which has multiple personalities. And those multiple personalities are in love with each other. This is what solo polyamorous means. You need to go to the university to study this shit. That's important. So solo polyamorous is a type of polyamorous configuration. It's, a, it's like a mechanism. Solo polyamorous people tend to see themselves as their own primary. So, so you're seeing yourself as your own primary, right? They usually have multiple separate or intertwined polyamorous dynamics. So you think that a person who has multiple personality disorder is placed in a box. No, they break the box. You can't put them in a box because there's many type of people that have multiple personality. Some of them are dynamic, like they, they change or they meld together. Some of them are intertwined. They're not exactly separate. Don't be a bigot, okay? Just know the taxonomy, the correct definition. And they are committed to their polyamorous relationship. So you are in love with yourself, but it's not really you. It's another like you, it's the secondary. So you have like the primary personality that like, do you see just how much information, how rich this is in information, like the raw information that is being presented here? You bigot. They don't depend on the relationship escalator to express their commitment. Now, I've no fucking idea what this is. I doubt Lindsay from Twitter. I mean, he tries to understand wokish. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to ask him. Hold on. I'll, I'll ask him. I'll ask him to translate. Because this is uh, something that I want to learn. You know, like someone told me, it's like, I'm not here to educate you. Go learn, you bigot. And, and I, I want to be a good boy. I, I want to be educated. I don't want to be an embarrassment. My mother told me, like, never be an embarrassment. And I don't want to end up as an embarrassment. I want to wanna be educated. I want to know what the conversation is about. 
Wait, the left arm was also a hook? Did I miss that? I'll see it in a bit. All right. So what is the correct name? It's Lindsay... Lindsay Ellis, I think? The name of the expert. James Lindsay. Okay. James Lindsay. Look at this. I am going to ask a New York Times best-selling author, math PhD. I mean, this, this is this is deep, chat. This is deep. And I, I am going to ask this very important and educated person. about what is this so uh how, how should i phrase it chat because this is i don't want to offend him i mean he's a busy man i don't want to waste his time okay um challenge no how, how, how should i frame it chat I, i'm a little nervous i i don't i usually don't speak with important people The left arm of Sam Hyde. Um, ask the prophet. No, hold on. We need to take this seriously, chat. This is difficult. No, James, what the hell is this? No, like I, I can't be like, what the hell is this with the man? He's, he's a PhD. Like people in academia, they demand respect. All right. I know how. This is a difficult challenge that I present to you, sir. Since you like translating from the wokish, I bet I am willing to bet that you cannot translate what is go no sorry. You cannot unpack what is going on here. No, but seriously. <laughs> you have with your knowledge and expertise. Can you explain this away for us normal people? For, 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 okay, for us bigots. Now we need to correct the spelling errors. I think this one has another L. See, this is what I deal with every day. Wokish is probably correct, seriously is correct. Uh, I'm not even going to bother. All right. Bigots, 1G. Ah, there we go. Et voila. And now we wait. Now we wait, chat. The bet has been planted. We just gotta wait. I don't think we're going to get a response this stream. So, uh, maybe next stream. From Zenith, why do they make up new terms for someone who is... How do they say it? They say it uh, neuroatypical. Um, you will notice that with progressive ideology, you have people who are neuroatypical put in positions of power in order to cure everyone else. So it's not that they who are in the academia and are writing this, is not that they have maybe some mental issues. No, no, no. You are the person that has mental issues and you need to be helped. And in order to be helped, you need to educate yourself. You bigot, buy their books, buy their stuff. And it's not enough to buy them. You also have to religiously believe everything that's written there. Let's see if I got uh, a couple more super chats. Uh, check DMs. That's just some prosthetic uh, limbs look. I, I will look. I, I mean, if that's the case, I have to say, I have worked in a hospital with many disabled people. I have never seen anyone have a hook for a leg. I mean, that's just, it's impractical. I'm not saying, I mean, maybe it exists, but it's impractical. Uh, why does it have a pilot hook for a leg? All right, let's, uh, let's look at uh, what Abdi said. I mean, maybe, maybe it's a trend in the United States.
Okay, so it, it um, dude. Let me see if I can uh... while they may look like hooks they're not actual hooks all right so uh, what, what you're seeing this is for athletes so yes uh, believe it or not I think like the uh, w w uh, an athlete actually won using this and there was actually controversy because people were pointing out that he might, like, despite what it seems, he may actually have an advantage because without having legs, they're, like, the blood the, the blood doesn't need to go uh, into the legs, so the heart has an easier job pumping. Like, there was some medical controversy. I don't know. I don't care. But what I want to say is that, yeah, but, but you need to have two of them, and you also need to have uh, a flat ground. So it's only when you're doing exercise and running. And they don't look like hooks. Right? They're not shaped like hooks. They're actually flexible. So they're not they're not out of metal that, that's fixed. And notice how they're they're faced towards the front. They're not faced sideways or towards the back. They're, they're more like the, the way a foot is supposed to be. So yes, the, the, it is true. They do exist, but it's not a hook. And... Um, Again, it, it's only for a specific circumstance. Running, that's it. Like, you, you can't actually walk like this um, outside. I mean, you can, but it's very difficult. And I already explained why. Because if it's not a flat surface, for example, if you're uh, climbing stairs or if you're uh, in, in an area where there's bushes, right? Like a green area or something, you're going to have difficulty. So that's why a wooden foot is actually better. But most people, they, they just use a wheelchair or they use a, a cane. Oscar Pistorias, I have no idea what that is. Carbon fiber. Yeah. I mean, dude, it, it doesn't look the same. Let me just bring up the previous one. People say that I'm coping. Is it a cope? I mean, does this look the same? Huh? Does it look the same to you? I mean, again, it's if it was faced towards the front, then I would have recognized it. But I, I generally didn't even think about this. Like, I didn't even recognize them when I first looked at them. It, it looks like a hook, like Captain Hook using it. It's, it's not the same. I mean, okay, props, props to the artist if they actually tried to represent this. But my mind didn't even go to this place. Fiber aluminum steel. It can be interpreted as that it's badly drawn corporate art. Okay, if that's the case, I apologize. I apologize. If that's the case, I was wrong. I'm willing to admit it. But yes, it's uh, specifically for running, so it's not for uh, daily activities. Okay. Um, what do you do when you get news like this? I mean, y you got to put yourself into my position. Every day I wake up, and as I mentioned before, I have to do four YouTube videos. Two on my main channel, two on my secondary. And I scour the internet, I go on various places, and eventually you come up to something like this. Scientists find putting pantyhose on your head makes your mask safer. Now, the problem is whether or not this is real. And it's not difficult to find, right? Because you type the title in Google and you're immediately going to see whether or not this is real. But the issue is that I can't tell. I honest to God cannot tell. Like I, I am unable to know whether or not this is true, chat. I don't know. Like I used to know. 
I used to be able to tell whether or not something is real or a parody. Now I just can't. I cannot. For the life of me. Like, like if you were to, to say, look V, you get a million dollars if you guess correctly. And you're asking me, and you're like, is this a real article or not? I would not be able to tell. I would start panicking. I would start crying. I, I would be like, no. It's a million dollars. I have to get this right. Because it's tempting to say yes, but at the same time, what if it's a trap? <laughs> Why is this happening to me? And it's happening more and more often. There, there used to be a time when it would happen like... I, well, in the beginning, when I first started the channel, it would never happen. Like, I, I would be able to know. It's like, okay, this is sarcasm. This is good. But now I can't tell you. I literally cannot. And it happened like, uh, at first it happened like once every four months. It was an article that you couldn't tell whether or not it's real. Then it happened once every two months and then once a month. And now it's daily chat. It's daily. Every single day. I, I deal with this. And I need to be extra careful. Because woe for the person that uploads parody on YouTube without knowing it's parody. You know, this is why I need Snopes in my life. This is why I need fact checkers. Like, people were laughing when fact-checkers were fact-checking parody. It was a good thing, chat. It was a good thing. <laughs> I would uh, make a poll and ask you guys whether or not it's true. But what's the point? Because, like, a lot of you would probably lie, wouldn't you? You, you would cheat. You would go on Google and you would find out whether or not it's true. Scientists have some interesting fetishes. Probably. I mean, imagine a world where you're going out and you see your crush, your beautiful, beautiful crush at high school and she's wearing her panties on her face. Right? And then you're like, hey, come over here. I need to whisper you a secret. And as she leans in, you're closer and you know why you're there. It's those, those moments where... Where your lips go next to her ear to whisper, but your nose is also very close, and you can inhale. That's probably what scientists want. Maybe, like, can you imagine if there's an actual scientist like that, that works at one of these corporations, or for the government? And, and he just really wants to know what color of underwear is his crush wearing. So he publishes this in the hopes that she will actually come to work with the pantsu. Way ahead of them scientists, but when I put the lady pantyhose on my head, I was ashamed as a creep. Yes, literally, like if you have that fetish, you can now do it. And you're like, I'm not a creep, I'm a normal person. I keep myself safe. You should keep yourself safe too, you bigot. Billy wants to know what he missed. Okay, Billy, I will show you. Let's go back to... To the article. So Billy, you're a working class man. You're you're more feet on the ground type of guy. You know, the working class people are no nonsense type of people usually. They're they're very grounded in reality. I can't tell, Billy, is this real or not? Without Googling, of course. If I Google I would be able to tell. But without Googling, is this a parody or is it real? Did a scientist actually say that putting your pantyhose on your head makes your mask safer? Yes or no? I can't tell, Bill. I that, that's that's what scares me. That that is the scary thought. Now we're going to find out. So, um, vice pantyhose over mask. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus. Fucking Christ. It is real. This is... This is reality. Like the Japanese would say, Kore wa genjutsu desu. Alright, let's, um, let's read the article. I mean, what can you do? You need to read it now. I, I advertised it. Gotta, gotta check it out, chat. 
<laughs> Simon Science says, yes, Simon Science. That that's really good. I'll use this from now. Simon Science. After testing seven ways to make masks seal better around the face, researchers found that a pair of hoisery does the trick. Do you not think there might be other material which can do the trick just as fine but is less humiliating? I wish I could talk with the researchers. It's like, yeah, but... <laughs> you know, it's like when a person comes up with a solution but it's not very optimal. It's like, which is the fastest way to take the kitty poop out of the litter with your hand? And you're like, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, you, you can do that, but can we not? You know, just because it can be done doesn't mean you should. Like, you, you, you can definitely clean the litter from your kitty a lot faster using your bare hand, but No, like, again, like the, the Japanese would say, Demo shikushi. You, you can clean it with your hand. Demo shikushi. Uh, I recently came across a selfie from April 2020 when I wore a mask that was just a bandana folded up and secured with hair ties to make a sad, limp origami face covering. It's hard to believe this was the viral, LOL, personal protective gear a trick at a time. But back then, not even nurses could get their hands on a mask. All right. So the researchers from the University of Cambridge started testing out some of the ways people might just uh, might adjust face masks to make them fit better. And here you have a couple uh, filling the sides of the, of a mask with gauze. What is gauze? Me not speaking English. Unironically, I don't know what gauze is, but okay. Tapping the edges of the mask to one, taping, taping the edges of a mask to one's face. Why not just get a bottle of water? Like, look, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Look, I'll, I'll help the scientists. All right. If, if there's any scientists watching this, please fact check me. So you wear your mask, okay? Like, this is very important. Um, YouTube insists. <laughs> but, this is my idea, all right? Like, uh, I, I just came up with it. I, I don't know whether or not it's good. But I, I, I just came up with it, and I want scientists to fact check me on this. Okay, I, I'm pitching the idea. By the way, if you use it, you have to give me credit. I will sue your ass for intellectual property. I will go Pokimane on your ass if you don't give me credit. So take a, a an empty bottle of water, right? Uh, it has to be a thick one. I think um, five liters is the best, but I uh, th there must be higher than five. Like if you find a 10 liter, it would probably be better. And what you want to do is you want to cut down the... Uh, do you see where this is going, chat? Are you following? You cut down the bottom and then you put your head inside. And you also have the advantage of the cork. Like, I, I suggest you keep the cork open so you don't asphyxiate. But if you're in a danger zone, like someone is approaching the uh, social distance and is about to violate your, your safety zone, you put the cork on really fast so the virus can't get in. And then when the person goes away, you, you unscrew the cork. I wish scientists could test this method out. I'm not suggesting anyone should do it because it hasn't been tested. Okay, not enough evidence to suggest, but I would want scientists to look into it. I mean, if we're at the level where scientists are talking about putting pantyhose on your head, maybe they can try my idea and we can see which one is safer. It's, uh, what happened when you, when you put your mind to it? People have already done similar. My God, they stole my idea. Someone with a time machine 
went back into the past and gave my idea to people. Which one of you did it? Which one of you has a time machine and travel back into the past? I want to know. Why do you want when you can just go to a BLM protest and not risk getting infected? You know, I never understood that. I mean, it happened in the United States, but it was so bizarre, right? Because one day the media was basically saying that if you leave your house, you're going to die. And the next day, the media was encouraging people to go out and protest. And I was thinking like, my God, the United States must really be a white supremacist country because they're encouraging BLM to go out and risk their lives during a pandemic. Oh, well. Uh, Billy Odell, I have time for gazebo. Okay, Billy, how much would it cost for me to ask you to build me a gazebo? If I invite you to Romania and I like build it, Billy, build it for me. How much would I have to pay you? How much would you charge for the gazebo production? Just wear a gas mask. Didn't, um, what's his name? Uh, Sticks Hex and Hammer buy a gas mask. I, I will tell you something even better, right? and, I, and I'll show you what they took away from us. Never forget. Never forget, Chad. This is what they took away from us. So instead of a gas mask, Mr. Jones here has, has found a different alternative. I would uh, advocate for like wearing your normal mask, but on top of the mask, you can wear this. And this is very progressive. Uh? What is, is this like a pantyhose or not? What does the science say? This is what they took from us, chat. This this is what they robbed us from. They, they robbed it away from us. Billy, I already finished playing Resident Evil 3. What else do you want from me? Gojira, yes. The plague doctor mask? Oh my god, that is epic. I wish I would have one. Like, I, I don't know if you can buy one in Romania. I guess you'd have to make it yourself. But it, it would be so cool. Like, honestly, I wish I would have one. A plague doctor mask. It makes you look badass. Like, you, you can put a wimp under a plague doctor mask and immediately they look badass. No, but Billy, unironically, how much would you charge for a gazebo? Imagine a street full of plague doctors. My God, that would actually make the pandemic fun. Um, let me see. Especially if you have like the whole attire. So for those of you who don't know, doctors actually used to wear black in the past. And the reason for this is that black is a color that you can notice very easily when it gets dirty. So obviously being a doctor, cleanliness is very important. So you want to wear something that you can see when it's dirty. And, and black is one of those colors. Like the moment you have even the tiny smudge, you get to notice it. Um, but turns out that doctors wearing black was actually harming the patient psychologically. I mean, imagine being surrounded by an army of people in black. It, it looks creepy. So that's why they started wearing white because it has the same property as black like white you can notice very easily if it gets a smudge if it gets dirty um and obviously like other doctors would probably shave you i mean it never happened to me but i imagine like if you go with uh, a dirty uh, you know doctor's uh, coat then people would be upset 
Uh, but yeah, like have the entire attire. This would be great. And leave your house like this. That I, you know what? I, I'm actually curious if I can buy this in Romania and how much it costs. Because now I want it. Now I really want it. It's it's so upsetting that I can only figure it out. Oh, it's so cheap. Oh my god, it is so cheap. I'll probably be able to get it. So it's um. I mean, let me tell you how much it's in dollars. Forty dollars. It's 40 bucks, chat. But unfortunately, I think it's just the mask. So it's not so cheap. I thought it's like the entire costume. And now you get all of this. And I was like, really? Like all of this for $40? Uh, but no, it's just the mask. You don't, you don't even get the hat. So no, it's not cheap. Um, my bad. It's expensive, chat. It's expensive. Forty dollars just for a mask. Jesus Christ. And it's not even Armani Guccio. No, sorry. What what is the brand name? Armani Armani something. Well, whatever. I'm not going to talk about inside jokes anymore. I think if you watch so Billy says, if I watch Norm Abraham build one, you can get the idea of how easy they are. No, but I want you to build one. Like when I when I go home and I relax in the gazebo, I want to know like my friend Billy built this for me. You know, it's something that only you can give Billy. It's not something that can be bought. I mean, it is actually it can be bought, but the sentimental value will be there. If someone ruins that gazebo, I will ask more for it because it's like the gazebo that my friend Billy made. And you ruined it, you son of a bitch. If it's an actual leather mask, then that's a fine price. Yeah, but I don't want a leather mask. I just, I just want a normal mask that looks like a plague doctor. I, I don't actually want leather or anything like that. Jesus. Come on. Armani. 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 Yes, Armani. Billy is not leaving the United States. Why Why not, Billy? Why don't you want to come to Eastern Europe? We have cool castles. You don't get the hat, Nairot. You don't, you don't get the hat for $40. You just get the mask. You have to buy the hat separate. If it was the hat as well, then yes, $40, $40 would have been a bargain price. But no, you don't get the, the hat. You just get the... You just get the mask. I'm also curious, like, if the cops would stop you. Like, would, would they say that the mask isn't good enough? Legally speaking, yes. Like, legally speaking, you, you would probably not wear a proper mask. Unless you put on a mask, and then you put the mask on top of the mask, and then it's legally fine. Like, then, then it's okay. So, so you'd have to put, like, the, the proper mask, and on top of the proper mask, you put the plague doctor mask. But then the problem is, like, every time you, you, you have to show people. It's like, look, I have it on. Eastern Europe scares Billy? Really? This scares you, Billy? This is scary for you. The, the, this frightens you, huh? It's actually a uh, hotel, which is a tourist attraction, and it's uh, Dracula themed. So you actually get to sleep in a coffin. But in all reality, I mean, you, you, imagine going and visiting this. You know, an ancient castle, and you get this beautiful scenery, and it's like a museum inside you get to see how the people in medieval times used to live i mean look, look how good it is right and you go to this hotel and you can stay here it's very cheap if you're american you can afford it right probably like 50 dollars a month or something look at it billy it frightens you you know why it frightens you because you don't have a single castle in the united states you don't have one single castle in the United... Okay, you have the Disney castle. Ha <laughs> ha. The mouse has a castle in the US, right? Ha <laughs> ha. 
So Walt Disney does have a castle in the US. Haha. <laughs> so I take it back. But besides Walt Disney, you don't have a single medieval castle. If I have a time machine and I bring the gods into the US, they would be very disappointed because they have absolutely nothing to siege. That's why you're afraid. What, what castle? Yeah, no, $50 a day. It's a hotel. You're going there as tourism. It's not rent. You can't rent the hotel. You can't rent the castle. They will not rent you the castle. You can't live in the castle. Even if you pay rent. I mean, technically you can. It's, it's $50 a day, right? So you'd have to do it times 30. It's actually not that bad. I have not seen Transylvania 65,000, no. Uh, people didn't have toilets in the castle. So, no, it, they actually did have some sort of toilets. Um, it, it, it's difficult to describe. They didn't function with water. It, it, it was still a hole in the chair. And you'd poop in it and it, it would go through a tube all the way outside. And I think there were servants which uh, had to clean the tubes. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I, but back then it probably did smell bad. But but it smelled better than a PV, definitely, because of the tube. Like the 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 droppings would, would go outside of the castle wall. I said probably 50 baht. Yeah, it's dirt cheap. Like, Europe is dirt cheap. Uh, I did not talk about Italy's harsh COVID pass requirements because I, I haven't looked into it. My rent is $2,800 a month in California. Yeah? I could live in that castle for nearly half my rent. You could. Yes, you definitely could. And you'd also get a minion that serves you breakfast for, for $10 extra. They're called guard robes. Look up Hearst Castle. All right, let, let me see what America has to offer. Apparently, Americans are proud that they have Hearst Castle. I can't, I can't diss Americans for her. What is this beauty shit? Look at it. Chat. Look at it. Like, like what is this? How is it supposed to keep anyone out? It's not, I mean, look, look at the building. It, it's on flat ground. It doesn't have any sort of fortifications. I mean, it, it's awful. Who taught you how to build castles? California, yeah. Of course the California. Look, look at it, right? So, so it looks, oh my God, it's so important. If you attack it from the back, you can easily take it. You go, you go in from the back. You move, you move your troops on the back and boom, it's there. What is this? This is not a castle. This is a tall building. Let me show you a castle. Look at this. This is a castle. It's grandiose. It's on top of the mountain. There's only one way in and one way out. You can't siege this shit. Like, no, seriously, how do you siege this? How the fuck do you siege this? Like, th think about your, your demon. There is absolutely no way. I, I, don't, I don't think this actually ever got taken. Like, there's no way you can take it. Think about it. Like, how, how do you even move the troops? Like, what? I'm actually curious. Uh, I'm, I'm going to look at the um, the history of the castle. Because I, I genuinely like, don't know how you can take something like this. Unless you have gunpowder. But like without gunpowder, there's no way. that You cannot. And even then, like imagine like trying to break the gate. Like you, you have a single file, uh, you know, group of military that goes, no, no, this, this is... Right? But that's a castle. With trained dragons, yes. Uh, wait for defenders to starve to death. Yeah, well, the problem with that is that the defenders would usually ask for reinforcements. 
So, uh, yeah, you could wait them out, but most of the time, the, the uh, especially in the Romania, uh, the, well, the Romanian countries, uh, Transylvania, Wallachia, and Moldavia, um, the castles would be in close proximity to one another so they can support each other. So when a castle was sieged, the other castles would send their armies in order to try to lift the siege from the first one. So, uh, Like, why then visit Castello di Amorosa? Took 10 years to build. All right, let's see Castello di Amorosa. You cut the foot super Man, it's not so simple. Okay, I mean, I, I guess this passes. This is an okay castle. I, I can't say anything negative about the Americas now. I mean, if you're, if you're really proud of this, you know, it's kind of like... You see, you see a little child coming with you and it's like, look daddy, look what I did. Oh, yeah, okay. That's nice, Bill. You, you can't you can't be constantly mean, you know. I mean, I it, it, initially I saw it and I was like, "What is that shit?" And now it's like, "Okay, well, we we have this." And I'm like, "Okay, it passes. It's good enough. There's room for improvement, but other than that, good enough." I like this though, like the the wine. All right, inside the castle, it's more than good enough. Inside the castle, it's actually very good. I love it. I would actually spend money to visit. Wine tasting and vineyard tours. I hope they serve food. Like th this would be so epic. Like imagine getting some friends and sitting here and eating. I mean this this would actually be uh, a memorable trip. Unfortunately, I, I I'll tell you what the problem is, and and this is something that a lot of people fall for when they're looking at places to visit. So you're looking at this and it's like, oh my God, this is so cool. I wish I was there, right? Like I wish I could spend some money to go on a trip. And when you actually go, this is what you find. This is how it actually looks like in real life. All right, so expectations versus reality. You know, expectations, reality. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you look at it and it's like, oh my God, it's so cool. I mean, look, look, oh, wow, I, I can be here with my friends. I, I can get to our three friends and we can sit here. No, you're going to sit here like it's crowded with 20 other people that you don't know and they probably smell of sweat because they're tourists and they have no place to bathe. They've been driving for one hour, for, for one day straight and they, there was no shower in the car and now they're sitting there to relax. And they're next to you. And they're surrounding you. That, that, that's the reality of the situation. Scotty Castle in Death Valley. Alright, let's, let's keep looking. Americans keep having things to show. High-end weddings. Yeah, that, that would actually be a good place to have a wedding. I agree. But it will probably be expensive as fuck. I mean, what is what is this? Oh my god! Like Scotty Castle is the worst. It's not even a castle, dude. This is a villa. This is a cheap villa. It's not. What what is this? Even my wife was laughing from the other room. I heard her. Look, this is what probably happened after the Huns came. I, I don't even need to be a general to know how to take this castle. You don't, you don't even need formation. It's like just charge. Look. The windows don't have any fortification. This is a villa. Why would you call... Oh, you think... Oh, I see. You made a tower and it's a castle, right? So if it's a tower attached to a building, then clearly it must be a castle. American logic. It's not even tall. Disgusting, chat. Disgusting. 
Yeah, it's a Mexican villa. I, I know it. <laughs> yeah. Coral Castle in Florida. All right, hopefully... I'm not going to be disappointed this time because I can't handle any more disappointment. Especially when it comes to castles. You, you can't show a Romanian crap and call it a castle. My god, I bet, I bet the Americans take a big shit in the toilet and they put a tower next to the shit, so therefore it's a castle. Because if you attach a tower to anything, it must be a castle. What is this chat? Tough. Where's the castle? I mean, even the Mexican villa was more of a castle than this. I mean, at least it had walls surrounding it. You're taking the piss now, aren't you? Dude, this is not a castle. This is a mausoleum. And what happens after a castle is taken? And the invading army was so upset with the way you desecrated the word castle that they decided to do this. Let me show you a castle. Alright? Let me, let me. At least this makes sense. I mean, yeah, look, look how difficult it is to besiege. You, you can only come from the front. I mean, if, if you go from the side, you, you, can't, you can't get in. And at the front, at least it has a choke point. So, uh, you know, I, like, uh, at least, yeah, okay, fine. This is a castle. I, 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 do, I do give in. Not the best. Don't get me wrong. Not the best. But still. If the Huns are coming, I would feel safer inside than into the Coral Castle. Haha. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I would rather be with the Huns. The mouse would probably force me to watch the new Star Wars movies, and I don't know if I can take it again. Star Wars uh, 9 is, is watchable, 10 is, is pure mental trauma. Like, if I have to watch Star Wars Episode 10 again... I don't think I can make it, chat. It's a great monument, though. Mystery about how one guy created it. I, look, when I ask for great monuments, then you can show me the tomb of the unknown soldier. Then you can show me the Statue of Liberty. Like You, you have a lot of cool things to show me when it comes to monuments. But when we talk about castles, I want to see castles. Montezuma Castle in Arizona. It is literally built inside a wall. And thank you for giving me content for the past few years. Why, why thank you, Fate of Mortality. Bolt Castle. Um, it's more of a story of how Scotty Castle came to be. I don't care about the story. I want to see a castle. <laughs> All right, let's look at Montezuma Castle. See the... All right, fine. I guess... I take it back. Americas might actually have castles. But someone actually knew history. Uh, what is this? Arizona. Okay, this is a fucking castle. Yes, absolutely. This, this is fucking awesome. Holy shit. These people knew what they were doing. Yeah, the Huns would not be able to conquer this. This, this is... Yeah, this is actually very beautiful. I mean, granted, could be bigger. It could have had more intricate design. I mean, a noble lives there, right? He, he should display his wealth somehow by, by having some beautiful design and, and some more interesting architecture, but it does serve its purpose. Like it's definitely something which can host soldiers and, and make it uh, a force modifier. With uh, with 10 men, you can manage to hold against 100 men. That, that's the purpose of a castle. 
Uh, none of which the previous castles you guys showed me fit that purpose. So at least from a pragmatic point of view, yes, this is a castle. This is actually very stunning, and, and the reason I like it is, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, comparing to other castles, it doesn't look very impressive. I mean, if you look at uh, China or Japan, I mean, th they have some really intri intricate castles, but um, the reason why this is impressive is because they managed to build it without beasts of burden, and they managed to build it without uh, the same tools that the Chinese, Japanese, or Europeans used. Uh, probably used a little bit of slaves too to build it, right? But still, I mean, it's it's very impressive with with the technology they had to make something like this in the rock. In America, a man's home is his castle. Tell that to the SWAT. <clears throat> No wheels. Oh yeah, they didn't have wheels. Do you know something interesting about wheels? Like this blew my mind when I actually realized. Uh, the wheelbarrow was actually invented quite late in history. So, um, invention of wheelbarrow. Let, let me look it up. So it existed in China, but I'm curious like when it was brought in Europe. Alright. Look look how late it actually came in Europe. So in China the wheelbarrow actually existed to 200 AD, but in Europe it came around 1250-1170. Of course uh, the Chinese also had a difficult um, a difficult design. The the wheel was in the middle of the barrel. So the one that we know, you know where you hold it from the back and you have a wheel in the front. Uh, that was invented very late. So up until then, people actually had to carry stuff by hand. Horrible. Uh, don't usually make donations, says DT. But I figured I should uh, show some appreciation for all the great videos. Been a daily viewer as long as I remember. Well, I, I never see you in the chat. It's so weird. Like, I have so many daily viewers. A lot of you are shy. Like, I, I usually recognize. Like, for example, Fox Troika. I never saw Fox Troika in the chat. But he's got a mother, a wrench, so I guess I must have seen him before. I'm just a dum dum. Uh, don't miss Abdi's super chat. All right, uh, let me check. They don't need fortifications from Indians, they just sneeze at them. Yeah, so um, a lot of people. They think that Americas were actually capable, that Europeans were actually capable of at wiping up an entire population uh, through warfare. That's not exactly true. Uh, a lot of Indians died from exposure to the Europeans because of diseases. And the Europeans didn't know, by the way. Um, the germ theory wasn't invented. But because uh, Europeans spent a lot of time with animal husbandry, they, they had immunity to a lot of diseases. So when they went to America, a lot of Indians just died because of exposure. Now, what's interesting is that the same thing happened to the Europeans when they went to Africa. So Africa, because of the tropical climate and because of the tsetse fly and other things, the, the malaria and what have you, uh, Europeans couldn't make it in Africa. So they couldn't survive. So it's very interesting. Uh, show forts. They can at least withstand cannon fire. Oh, okay. Well, a fort is not a castle. I wanted to see a castle. Uh, but yeah, America does have interesting forts. I do agree. Uh, there was one more castle that people wanted me to see. I think it was like a German castle. Um... Yanks don't have castles, they have forts. I know the dude!
Bolt Castle is on an island. Why would you make a castle on an island, though? I mean... The island is easy to defend by itself. But I guess, you know, like, a little bit of redundancy, then. Um... <clears throat> It's really beautiful, to be honest. What is this? Is this in America? It can't be in America. Let me let me check the geographical. New York. Oh my God! This is the most beautiful castle that I have seen so far. I mean, this is European level. It's kind of redundant, right? Because, like, here's the thing. Um, the reason you have castles is for places of governance, as well as military bases. So if you need to mobilize the troops and you're surrounded by water, it's not that you can't do it, but it's a little bit sluggish. However, and it's also like the logistics involved to supply the castle with constant food through the river. But other than that, yeah, it's, it's uh, very beautiful. I mean, I, I would love to visit this place. It looks great. Yeah, this this is looking really really great. I I definitely would have been impressed if this was the first thing you'd have shown me. It's like Americans don't have castles. All right, well check out Bolt Castle, and I'll be like, holy shit, that is hot, that is great. Uh, okay, um, name me a good fort that you want me to see. If you're so proud of your forts, Americans, like tell me tell me a good fort. Want to see it in the chat. Has a harbor fortification. Yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. I'm not, I'm not checking castles anymore. I'm looking at forts. I want to see a fort. Come on. There must have been plenty during the American Civil War. Field to Enfilade? What is this field to Enfilade? I'm not looking for castles, chat. Enough. Enough with the castles. All right? we're, we're done. We're done with the castles. We're, we're at forts now. Fort Mustang. Oh my god, that is an American name. Okay, fine. I, I will look at it. I mean, it, it sounds really cool. It's like Fort Mustang. I, I already feel like the, the power. It's like a military base. Where do you come from? I come from Fort Mustang. So so I look for Fort Mustang and look what I get, chat. Look what I get. This is what Google shows me. This is what this is by All right. Fine. I, actual fort. No, the, we we need something else, chat. Google Google does not compute. Google does not understand. Uh, no, like, I, I, I don't look at West Point or something like that. No, it needs to have fort in the name. It's not a fort unless you have fort in the name. Okay? Frank Castle is the Punisher. Shut up. You're not tricking me again. Okay, fort. Mikil... How the fuck? Fort be killed my. <laughs> Fort be killing my. Ki <laughs> Why you do this, Americans? Why do you think it's funny? Do you think it's hilarious? Is it? Oh, you don't have castles, so so you wanna fuck with the Europeans. Like, I know how I'm going to fuck with the Europeans. I mean, I'm going to make them so they can't pronounce it. Imagine being a general invading the US. It's like, we need to take forth Bikili. Bikili. The war is over by the time the guy pronounces it. Mikili Makin. My fucking god. Fort Mikili Makinak. Mikili Makinak. See, once you do it once, you can now do it like Fort Mikili Makinak. You need to go to Fort Mikili Makinak. 
assault it and go go to the you, you guys you're going to go to the south of the fort Mikilimakinak and you're going to go to the west of the Mikilimakinak. Ah. I could do it. Yeah, I mean uh, the the thing with the forts though is, is like they're not aesthetically pleasing, but they do so is, uh, they they do fit the purpose. They they're very fit for a purpose. It's a wall. Surround shit. And uh, some of the best forts are the ones that are taking advantage of the territory. For example, th this one is really good. The, the Mikili Makinak. Is, is this still Mikili Makinak? I don't know. But it's nice. No, this one is really great. I mean, the, the way it, it got placed. So you, you have the hill. And there's water behind you. So um, obviously they're not going to come from here. I mean, it, it's really great. Good fortification. Kind of looks like a prison if you look at this one. San Francisco Armory. All right, let's let's look at San Francisco Armory. Wow, this is so cool. Wow, I love it. Oh my god, the, the, all right. It's like a castle, but it's a fort. No, actually, it's an armory. It's so cool, though. Do they have pictures from inside? Is this inside the armory? Uh, I want to visit, but it's in San Francisco. Can anyone move this fort outside of San Francisco? Like put it in Texas or somewhere so I can visit. I don't want to go to San Francisco. Like just, just move it away from San, anywhere you want. Preferably in a red state, but move it to Florida. Can you, can you make the San Francisco army like move it to Florida and then I can visit. I swear to God, I, I will come to the US if you do that. Like do that for me. It's not a big request. You're going to get more tourism. Just drag it, put it on wheels, I don't know what you do, but, but like drag it to Florida. Like click and drag, can you do that? Like you click on it and you drag it. Like, like this, like this, and, and, and you drag it around, right? Drag it all the way to Florida. Give it, give it to Florida, man. <laughs> Only for me, yes. It's a prison? I don't care, it looks fucking great. Looks awesome. Search for Star Force USA. All right. Let's look at Star Force USA. Now I'm curious. Whoa, they're cool. My God, they're, they're really nice. Yeah, see, th this is like uh, when you start to make something akin to a castle. Because a castle is th doesn't just fit the military purpose. It's also like the wealth of the people giving the fuck you to the invaders. Like, look how rich we are. And with the Americas, with the Starforts castle, it's not just the defensive uh, perspective. But it's also like, look, we had time to make this intricate design. Fuck you. That's how wealthy we are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're really nice, man. I mean, this this is so cool. This is so so cool. You got you got to give props to the people, right? So up until that point, you like a castle made you safe, relatively. I mean, nothing was a hundred percent safe, but like a castle was definitely the way to have a force multiplier. And then you have gunpowder, and gunpowder just changes the game. Because now, like, all the castle walls, they're, they're nothing, they're dirt. If you have, like, some good cannons, they just go down. <clears throat> so they have to invent something else, and they come up with the concept of the fort. And the fort is minimalistic. It doesn't have uh, as many fortifications like a castle. But it's got very powerful ways of repelling the invader with their own cannons. So, in the case of the this fort, for example, like, if you try to attack it, 
you get all of these other emplacements which have cannons and then they also attack. So so it's really cool. I mean, it's the ingenuity and the 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 way it's kind of like evolution, like adapting to the new environment, to the new situation. It's it's really great. Plus, some of them look really good. All right, enough. Um, hard to hit the wall straight on? It depends what you're using to attack the walls. Uh, when technology started becoming more advanced, then it wasn't that hard to hit the walls head on. Castles were actual places for the nobility to live, yes and no. Um, usually, the, so, so there's a difference between a castle and a palace. But yes, like some castles were centers of governance. But it, it wasn't that the nobility was supposed to live in because like they couldn't afford to have a mansion or something more beautiful. Because there, there were nobles that didn't like living in a castle. In fact, actually most nobles traveled around because they didn't have access to supermarkets. So the more you lived in a place, the more poor the place became because you're consuming the resources. And uh, they, they moved around. They had their own houses and stuff. But the, like castles were primarily focused for military things, like uh, military training, military uh, recruitment, uh, so on and so forth. Um, but you also had the palace. The palace was usually in the capital. Uh, yeah, it was still protected, but it was more luxurious. Like It, it allowed uh, for a better place to live in. An angled wall, uh, an angled wall deflects cannon fire. Doesn't take much damage for the impact. Okay, I didn't know that. Palaces used to be castles. Um, most of them, yes. I think there are a couple of exceptions. Uh, I, I, I think the Ottoman Empire had a palace that. Uh, no, 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 India, uh, the the Taj Mahal. If I'm not mistaken, I think that didn't used to be a castle. I think they, they just built it. I'll have to check it out, so don't quote me on this. Um, there, there were nobles that lived in castles. So, like, a nation had more than one castle. But, yeah, in the palace you had the king. And there are, like, no, actually there are several palaces. Um, for example, in Romania we have more than one palace. And it was the house of the king, but when the king wasn't living there, they, they could entrust someone else to live. Usually it was still a member of the royal family. Uh, palace of Versailles. It wasn't too, but it was still a palace. It's a palace! I don't care if it's a mausoleum. It's called, it, it has palace in the name. Anyway, right. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate the super chat, and uh, I'll try to improve my stream. I'll, I'll talk to some of my friends to see how I can uh, make more interesting visual effects and stuff to, to make the stream more professional. And uh, thank you for your donations. Thank you for your time.